I first played Final Fantasy VII when I was a sophomore back in high school, and if the ghost of David Future came and told little country Appalachian bumpkin Georgia Peach David that I'd be flown out to LA to experience a huge remake 26 years later, and I'd actually get to meet the development team behind the game, I would have smacked that little ghost silly because it was a lying little bitch. Because nothing like that would have ever happened to somebody like me. But hey, it happened, and I'm living the dream, and it's thanks to all of you, and I want to thank all of you for your support throughout the years as I go through my experience with the demo of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And if you are new to the channel, please be sure to smash that like button to show your love, and subscribe for some more top 10 lists, news, and reviews. And now, let's get started talking all about this fantastic demo that I had luck to experience. I've already shared with you some behind-the-scenes footage, photos, and stories about my trip to LA, as well as the press event as the whole. So if you missed that, please be sure to go back and watch that video. It is in the pinned comment and video description. Because now, here, I want to talk about what you've all been waiting for, the game itself. I got roughly four whole hours to play through the second chapter of the game, which essentially lasts from the very end of the Calm Village flashback up until entering the Mithril Mines. And man, it was just absolutely massive. Even four hours was not near enough time to experience everything that the entire chapter had to offer. I would estimate that it would take a casual player at about 10 or so hours to briefly just look at everything, while a good 20 or so hours to really 100% complete the entire chapter. But I only had four, so I was racing through it like a madman for the most part. The chapter again begins immediately upon waking up following the morning in Calm, and you're let loose to go out and explore the town, and if you recall, back in the original game, Calm was, well, uh, Calm. There wasn't really much to do there. It was just kind of like a little tiny pit stop between Midgar and Yunnan, and honestly, I kind of dreaded going there because of that long flashback sequence and all that. But here, Calm has been elevated, just as everything has been elevated. The town went from being just kind of like a little circular courtyard surrounded by houses, to becoming a living, breathing, multi-leveled, multi-faceted, Venetian-inspired town, complete with multiple named NPCs who actually matter, tons of different side quests to do, and little tiny alleyways to sneak on down and explore. Once you are awake, you're introduced to a few of the different systems featured in Rebirth, such as the bookshops, where you can upgrade your folios. And essentially what that means is that you're able to spend your SP in order to upgrade your character skills and learn new synergy attacks with your other party members, and those kind of work like dual text did back in Chrono Trigger. You just go on into the little skill tree in the menu and then customize your characters to your heart's content. You'll gain more SP every time that you level up, or from any manuscripts that you find. And even better, if you don't like your character setup, you can reset that too with no penalties. The whole weapon system has been changed too. Now, all the weapons have their own unique abilities, and the more often that you fight with the weapons, and the more often that you use those unique abilities, the more that you raise your proficiency. But if you max out your proficiency, you'll be able to use those unique abilities even if you don't have the weapon equipped. It actually kind of reminded me of that cool weapon system back in Arkrise Fantasia that I just loved. And speaking of other little games that I loved, there's a little bit of Star Ocean in here as well. Because every time that you go to a town or any kind of little area, your party will split up. And you can do what only can be described as like private actions. Where you can answer questions to raise or lower your affinity levels with them, or even do like little small side quests with them. And it's nice that those affection levels aren't hidden either. They are clearly shown, so you know exactly who loves you, and who couldn't give a damn about you either. The transmutation system is also introduced, which I did get to see back a little bit in the Tokyo Game Show demo that I previewed for y'all a couple of months ago. And this here is an extraordinarily simple crafting system, where you're able to take raw materials that you find out in your travels, and then transmute them into items. Now. All those little things are really cool, and they do help out with the gameplay, but, uh, who cares about the gameplay? We have a new card game! Woohoo! And, from what I played, it actually has the potential to be better than Final Fantasy VIII's Triple Triad. It's called Queen's Blood, and it's pretty sweet. It reminded me a lot of Asoa from Star Ocean 6. Basically, you put your cards down on the board, taking turns with your opponent, and each card has, like, a different power level, which increases your overall strength. Some cards also have special abilities, such as powering up other cards, or allowing you to place supremely powerful cards on the board. Then, at the end of the match, whoever has the most points on their horizontal lines will win the game. It does sound simple in theory, but it's actually really, really complex. 
and while I did win the tutorial game, I was quickly trounced by this little girl outside the inn who wanted to play against me. So I'm really going to need more practice with this, but I again was in a time crunch, so I couldn't exactly double down on card games forever. I just had to go to work and really go exploring instead. So, once you do leave Calm, the whole world opens up to you, and the grasslands are there ripe for exploration. And oh my gosh, y'all, this place is just massive! In the original game, the portion between Calm and the Mithril Mines was kind of small, rather nondescript, and it was just like a little jaunty journey. You'd stop off at the Chocoba Ranch, and then either outrun or fight the Midgar Somar before entering the mines in the course of maybe 15 to 20 or so minutes. But instead, here is where I spent the vast majority of my time, a good three or so hours, and I still barely even scratched the surface. And that was with me zipping from point A to point B, just trying to get as much of the storyline done as I could possibly do as quickly as possible so I can show y'all as much as possible. But even then, I was definitely crunched for time. There was just way too much stuff to do. Now, while there is no minimap, there are objective markers on the top of the screen showing you where to go for the various story beats, as well as all the different side quests. And if you do need a larger map, you can hit the face key on the controller, and that will bring up a huge map for you, and there you can also set pins. There are some paths to follow, but I really did spend like a large amount of time going off the beaten path, and just kind of looking around as I headed towards the Chocobo Ranch to meet up with Bill, Billy, and Chloe, and then find their lost little Chocobo, Pico. I must say though, I was rather upset that they didn't name the Chocobo Boko. I mean, Boko is just iconic, right? Or maybe even Coco. Who is Pico? Anyway, after you fail that Chocobo catching minigame like 20 something times, you'll finally get lucky and win and grab him. And once you do, you'll be able to summon him at will. And then fast travel opens up to all the main points of interest, as well as all the repaired Chocobo stops. One thing to note though, Every single different area has their own Chocobo, and you need to capture it yourself. So it's not like you could just like, capture Pico once, and then you'll never have to capture a Chocobo again. You will have to go and capture another Chocobo in the area between Mithril Mines and Yunnan, and use that one there, and then so on and so forth. But once you've gotten your trusty Golden Steed, you can head off into the swamp, and of course, face down the dreaded Midgar Somar. This sneaky snake is not optional this time around. He's not just there to grab Beta, and he's going to put your team to the test, so you'd better be ready for him, because he's no pushover. But once you do take him down, you'll be able to head to the Mithril Mines, and then move on to the next chapter of the game. But before that, let's talk about some even more stuff that you can do. That Dorcas Maximus Chadley pops up, and he tells you all about the Remnant Wave Towers. And what he wants you to do is go around and activate them all, which will allow him to analyze more monsters, find more crafting crap, find more treasure, and then use them as waypoints to find discovery points, and most importantly, he will be able to develop even more brand new material for you. As I was just like wandering around, I found so much stuff off the beaten path, I cannot even begin to describe it here. There's just a massive amount of side quests in the grasslands, as well as back in Calm Village, but I didn't really have time to do any sort of side quests. Instead, I wanted to focus on the exploration. And while I was out exploring, I found some guide stones, and then it'll lead you to summon monster sanctuaries for gathering more summons, and each region has their own little sanctuary, as well as discovery points and areas of interest that you'll stumble across that each have all sorts of caches of treasures and crafting materials. There's even different ruins to dive into, or NPCs just kind of like wandering around who are lost, or like old locked cottages that you need to remember whenever you find a key, or like a den of angry beasts. This is not Final Fantasy XV's empty open world. This is the real deal, folks, and I, for one, am chomping at the bit to really sink my teeth into this and play it at my own pace and not under a four-hour time limit. So that's it for my overall impressions of the demo of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And I, again, would like to thank Square Enix for inviting me to be a part of history because I really do appreciate this invitation and the experience, as well as being able to let you all know my unbiased, unabashed, honest opinion of the game. So what do you all think about the game, and are you going to be getting it? Do you think this is a like game of the year? Let's get a discussion going on here and let's all talk and chat about it because I'm always in the comments too. And if you like what I do here on the channel, please head on over to the Patreon to sign up for early access to my videos as well as behind the scenes photographs. The link to it is over in the video description. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe and have a good day.